Hello and welcome to episode number 10 of Crypto Cartography. Today we are talking data storage and crypto. We have 10 minutes. Let's go. Today we're talking stores, hashtag STORJ. About a $50 million market cap right now, 34 cents per token. Do have a look at the 24 hour volume, solid volume, about half of total market cap right now, at least in the 20, last 24 hours. Circulating supply, 143 million of 425 million. So slight fully diluted risk there. Coming over to our TLDR investment thesis, scalable, durable, decentralized cloud data storage platform, D-Storage. Makes sense. Outperformance of all centralized cloud storage platforms also makes sense. When it comes to DLT technology and use cases after currencies and DeFi, um, decentralized storage or data storage is an obvious one along with supply chain and identity. Um, this one just makes a lot of sense. So having a look at our historical timeline, our software development starts all the way back in August 2014 with our first white paper. Um, here is the third white paper in 2018. This is V3 of the network. I do want to note that V2 was deprecated due to scalability issues. So hopefully we've addressed the organizations, address those in V3. Um, if that, if the white paper is extensive, so if that one's a little long for you, they do have a V3 white paper executive summary, which was a quality read. Um, very good explanation of the organization. Going to our ICO on CryptoRank, um, May 2017 was our ICO. We raised $30 million at a $0.50 cent price. Uh, please note today's price versus $0.50. Cents. We're still under ICO. Um, after that, going back to CoinGecko, we did have a coin. Our coin issuance followed later that year in October 2017 at about $0.48. Cents. Um, it had a good run during the late 17 uh, BTC bull run. And then typical of altcoins in 2018, 2019, had some pretty poor performance um, since the COVID dip. And since March of 2020, we've actually had solid performance. But I do want to note, we are still under both the ICO price and the token issuance price. So... Think about that when you're, when you're thinking about it, if this is an investment for you. Um, also note that starting at around February 19, all the way till about July 19, we had pretty stable prices there in the mid-20s per token. So I do see that as a nice lower bounds of resistance for us. So we have that buffer between 35 and a, I'd say about 25 cents here of um, I, I could see the token holding at this price range for just a little bit longer based on that um, kind of support um, from 2019. Quickly look at our live products. We have storage and the actual website itself. Decentralized cloud storage is here. So our live products is the storage V3 network, which is our node operators. You and I can be node operators. And it is also what they call tardigrade.io, which is their backend de-storage later. That's where the files are actually held. If we wanted to become a host, we can. Um, there are network requirements here. Get paid to share your data. If you satisfy all these network requirements, you can participate. If not, as, it's, as you see, we're sorry, your hardware doesn't meet the minimum requirements. I am not a node storage um, operator as my systems don't meet the requirements, but I am interested in seeing that in the future. Um, if we, they do have a storage token balances and flows report. This is very, very key and something I hope they expand on in the future. I do want to note, if you come down here, they have a reconciliation of um, total storage supply. Um, all the way from circulating and total. And take a look at line number nine, if you ever do find this um, quarterly token report. Net network operations, storage node operator payments, less stores denominated revenue. So, and look, as you can see for this month, it was a negative 1.2 million. That's therefore telling me that the storage revenue earned from data and storage services was less than what the storage organization paid to their node operators. So it looks like we're actually operating at a loss in terms of storage this month, which is fine. I just want to see um, either a break-even price here or some, or just growth in the net network operations. Just wanted you to note that there. Um, quick shout out to Sculptex on Medium, who wrote a distributed storage comparison here in August. He did a wonderful comparison matrix here um, that's actually above my head. It looks like Sculptex is part of data storage because um, as you can see, we got a distributed storage comparison here with Amazon S3, Filecoin, Sia, Storage, and Zero Chain, and it gets quite complicated. It's a lovely, lovely comparison. So shout out to Sculptex for that one. Find this distributed storage comparison on Medium if you are interested. It goes into great, great detail. Additionally, we also have storagenet.info, which we love using statistics in crypto because we're all clamoring for some kind of valuation uh, metric. We do have our five satellites noted here. 
They are keeping track of storage payments to node operators as well. They are taking, keeping track of the network size and then also the node's location. One thing to note here, as you can see, we have massive Europe centricity here, which does pose a risk. Um, as you can see, there's not much, not many node operators in Asia as well, which is a large market for crypto clearly. So do you see a little bit of concentration risk in, here, in Europe? And I'd love to see storage grow in Asia a bit more. Additionally, if you are a storage node operator, there is a dashboard here for you um, that will keep track of your revenue and your statistics as well. We do also have a lot of other comparables. Um, we have Coin Market Cap has their comparables here, and also so does Crypto Slate. They both have storage coins. Um, there's both DLT competitors and non-DLT competitors, which we'll get into. Coming back to CoinGecko and over to our valuation propositions, um, scalable, durable, decentralized cloud storage, utilization of underutilized hard drives and bandwidth. to ma um, And then also, there's just a lot of benefits that I'm reading around decentralized storage versus centralized storage. And I've got those highlighted here. We're talking privacy, performance, accessibility, reliability, more efficient, cheaper, low latency, high durability. Um, and then the last one I wanted to note is it storage is AWS S3 compatible. So we need to migrate a lot of the world's data away from Amazon and big centralized tech companies to decentralized networks like storage for this to be a good investment for us. Um, and obviously, it, it's not that hard of a valuation proposition. It's more efficient and cheaper large-scale data storage than third-party centralized powers. Pause the video if you want to read the rest of the valuation propositions and also the uses of the storage token, which I noted up here. Let's dive down into investment risks. We have non-DLT enterprise competition risk, including Amazon. We have non-blockchain solution risk. Um, so the, the storage networks doesn't have its own blockchain but in, because it's run on Ethereum. Other competitors do have their own blockchain. Uh, we have bandwidth scalability risk, which was ap very apparent in V2. V2 had about 100,000 nodes up and running. I think we've got a little over 5,000 now in V3. But um, scalability risk still exists um, in V3. We need to see them overcome that. Geography risk, like we noted, there's little node penetration in Asia. I want to see larger penetration in Asia. We have centralization risk, reliance on centralized satellites. Um, Sculptex mentioned this one to me, where all of the satellites of the storage network are centralized, and they're not reliant on, um, I guess it's not a, a decentralized satellite network. Participation risk, um, in terms of being a node operator, there is uptime requirements and system requirements. So I'm wondering if those are going to be reduced in the future or um, how compatible it is it for all of the masses to be a node operator. We want more node operators than less, obviously, for our investment. And of course, there's enterprise adoption risk. We need people to leave AWS and other large centralized data storage sites and come to us forever, essentially. Great. Let's jump over to our quantitative analysis. Um, let's do our same exercise that we always do. We have a thousand dollar investment here based on a thirty-four percent, uh, thirty-four cent token price. That's around twenty-nine hundred tokens. If we come down to our investment forecast here, you'll see I've broken this up into market cap, fully diluted market cap, estimating circulating supply, which I've estimated as an increasing over time, all the way up until uh, fully uh, till the total supply for our last forecast. We've also got token price, investment value, and uh, profit percentage. So if I do increase our market caps for the organization up to all-time highs, up to 2.5, 10, and 25 billion respectively, we do see these nice increases in token price above $2, above 10, 30, could be above a $50 token price if the organization is worth tens of billions in the future and could be a, you know, a top 50 coin. As I always say, we have our four potential outcomes for crypto. We have potential for failure at any time and loss of all your investment. We could sell in this third BTC bull cycle coming up in 2021, 2022. Look for that zero to a thousand percent gain. We could sell in the fourth BTC bull run um, after the fourth halving um, in five to seven years. Look for a 2000 um, upward gain. And of course, we could be a hodler and we could be a node operator. So if you have... If you have data storage and bandwidth that you can give to the storage network, um, you can earn revenue on your storage tokens um, or on your on your hardware. And then, of course, you'll participate in the upside in the token appreciation as well. So there'll be payments from your network, um, your, you providing data to the network, and then also the price increase or the increase in the price as well.
When we're coming looking at portfolio subsectors, if you need a data play or decentralized storage, um, cloud cloud storage, file sharing, distributed computing, if you need those plays in your portfolio, wonderful, wonderful token to buy. As I mentioned, it's a saturated space. Um, CoinGecko's got storage comparables. Crypto Slate has storage comparables as well. Check out all of the other competitors as well. Um, when it comes to comparables, like I just noted, I broke them up into data storage and cloud storage. And we have our decentralized solutions on the left and for the most part, our centralized solutions on the right. Uh, the big ones, Sia Coin, Filecoin, Zero Chain, also ANKR and Lambda as well, Made Safe as well, MAID. And of course, we've got the big three in Amazon, Google, Microsoft as competitors, as well as uh, NEO. NEO actually has their own um, decentralized storage platform on the NEO blockchain, which kind of makes sense. So based on all this today, I'm giving stores a buy recommendation um, for, two, for all of the reasons that we've discussed on this call. And I want to get I want to get you guys in here under ICO price and even better under issuance price. We had our issuance price of 48 cents, our IPO price of 50 cents, and we're still sitting at 34 cents, even though we've had now six years of software development. Um, and we've only we raised 30 million as part of our ICO. I'm unsure if there was out, additional outside private sale as well uh, that were that were raised. But we're only sitting around 20 million above our invested capital for six years of software development in a nascent industry. Seems like storage is undervalued. Um, let me know your thoughts. That's my analysis of the storage um, D storage software solution. Let me know your thoughts. Happy altcoin investing. We'll see you next time.